Hello friends, this is Jim with Science Talk. I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos that's going to discuss uh, what's happening with precipitation patterns as a result of the planet warming. But before I do, uh, please allow me to remind you to share the work that I do, to please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so that you know when I drop a video, and also to please support the work I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash science talk with Jim Massa. If you're already a patron, thank you for your support and continued support. The general theme, if you will, of these reports that I'm going to be sharing over the next uh, videos, series of videos, is that wet areas will get wetter, dry areas will get drier. So, let's uh, look at the first one here. Rain and heat extremes are set to grow. Millions of people in Asia and Europe can expect fiercer heat extremes even if the world makes the promised emission cuts. Now, I don't know if any of you saw in the news recently that a city in Oman had the highest overnight low temperature ever recorded. 109 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when it's dark out. It was 109 degrees Fahrenheit. I just saw another report, and I'm going to be, uh, once, I, once the paper is officially published and, and so on in the peer-reviewed journals, I saw another report about how we've had 200 months in a row of higher than average temperatures. 200 months. I say that's pretty much a trend. So, over 50% of Europe and across more than a quarter of East Asia, the probability of record-breaking heat extremes will increase five-fold, five times as much. Over more than 35% of North America, Europe, and East Asia, the chance of record-breaking rainfall will increase by more than threefold. It's going to get hotter and wetter in these areas, basically, is, is the take-home message. This, they're looking at a resulting average rise in global temperatures between 2 degrees and 3 degrees Celsius by 2100. Now, if we looked at the Paris Accord that 195 nations signed, this exceeds the target, maximum target of two degrees increase. Now, try to keep it no more than two degrees, but the, the ideal temperature that they shot for is 1.5 degrees C. Well, it looks like wind is going to blow that right out of the water. Now, one degree C may not seem like much, but when you take the entire atmospheric system, that is a lot of heat that has to be inputted into the system to affect such an increase. So Noah Diffenbaugh of Stanford University in California and colleagues report in the journal Science Advances that they basically, to make these assessments, they took a statistical framework methodology. They applied a statistical framework methodology they tested it on uh, drought conditions in California and floods in northern India and then extrapolated to the rest of the planet to kind of see what might happen in the future. Now, yes, this, this is speculative because we're trying to predict the future, but that's the point of modeling. If I have a bunch of points on a line and I know my slope, I can therefore say, well, if x is this value, then y is going to be that value. That's the essence of a linear regression model. 
Okay, that's a simple example, but we, we come up with, with the y hat equals a, a beta sub 0 plus beta sub, uh, sub 1 x, and where beta sub 0 is the intercept, beta sub 1 is the slope, and we then try to figure out, okay, if, there was, if x is this, what's the response in y? We try to predict. Well, climate models, of course, are far, far more complicated, but it's in essence the same idea. You input the parameters, input the data, you come up with the model, and then you basically kind of go, okay, let's see what if. And, but the what is are not just willy-nilly, it's looking at, well, the data seems to be indicating this kind of pattern, this kind of trend. So let's extrapolate it out a little further and then see what the possible future results might bring. That's in essence what goes on. Now, not only is the point of the research to try and get a handle on possible future scenario, but it's also to prepare national civic authorities, you know, the people who make policies, politicians, so that they can take appropriate measures. So, that's one story I wanted to bring with you. The next story. Europe's cities face a hotter century. British scientists have just issued a detailed hazard forecast for Europe's cities for increasing floods, droughts, and heat waves. It will get hotter, wet areas will get wetter, dry areas will get drier, in essence. Europe's cities are about to bake. Worst case scenario for ever hotter temperatures now suggests that later this century, the Austrian city of Innsbruck, for example, could be subjected to heat waves 14 degrees Celsius hotter than any in the past. Let me repeat that. The Austrian city of Innsbruck could be subjected to heat waves 14 degrees hotter than anything in the past. That's about 26 degrees Fahrenheit more. So that's like the difference between 50 and 76, or 70 and 96, or 80 and 106. You get the idea. Altogether, more than 400 cities could, under such circumstances, expect heat waves at least 10 degrees hotter than any today. That's basically 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Droughts in Europe could be 14 times worse than any droughts experienced today. Some of Europe's rivers could experience peak flows 80% higher than any today, which means greater flood hazards, especially for the Northwest European cities. Three out of four Europeans live in cities. It could be much higher by 2050. Researchers report in the journal Environmental Research Letters that they examined the trends for all 571 cities in Europe's urban audit database and simulated the outcome of a range of climate predictions. And basically, as I've just reported to you, they are finding there will be hotter heat waves. And uh, just to give you a couple of little tidbits of examples, the highest increases in temperature extremes could be between 2 degrees and 7 degrees. That's best case scenario. The Finnish city of Helsinki can expect to see heat waves of perhaps 1.5 degrees C. Now that's because... Helsinki is basically subarctic. In the worst instance, temperatures over the Gulf of Finland could reach 8 degrees C higher than any ever recorded. So basically, the 1.5 is best case scenario, the 8 is worst case scenario. And of course, heat is a killer, especially for elderly who are not able to thermoregulate as efficiently as they were when they were younger. As we get older, our ability to thermoregulate, keep our bodies cool, keep our core from overheating, diminishes. 
heat strokes, heat, uh, and so on, and this could lead to uh, mortality. Drought could be even more devastating in southern Europe. So, you will have increased rain in northwestern Europe, that's what their, their models are indicating, but then, so we have wetter conditions in basically northwestern Europe, drier conditions in southern Europe. Of course, the wetter conditions, whether it be rain, snowfall, what have you, then you have all this discharge going into the rivers, and then the rivers will run the banks, flood, and so on. So, what we are going to be seeing is worsening conditions. In the worst case, 98% of European cities could see damaging droughts, while in Southern Europe, droughts could be 14 times more severe than now. I, I mentioned that earlier. Although Southern European regions are adapted to cope with droughts, this level of change could be beyond the breaking point, uh, said Selma Guerriera of the University of Newcastle. Furthermore, she goes on, most cities have considerable changes in more than one hazard, which highlights the substantial challenge cities face in managing climate risk. Another researcher, Richard Dawson, a co-author of the study, says, the research highlights the urgent need to design and adapt our cities to cope with these future conditions. We are already seeing at first hand the implications of extreme weather events in our capital cities. In Paris, the Seine River rose more than four meters above its water level. That's basically 13 feet. And in, now this is not Europe, but let's go to Cape Town in Africa. It's running out of water. And in fact, they might have already shut down all the water. Cape Town is without water. Now, here is an interesting wrinkle I'm going to toss out there. You've heard me discuss the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturn Circulation. What if that slows down? Models indicate that if that were to happen, Northern Europe, Scandinavia regions could start cooling down. So what will happen? Will Europe, if the AMOX slows down or shuts down, does Europe heat up or cool down? I don't know. We can do the modeling. The modeling would indicate that uh, these regions would start to cool down. The question then becomes how much inertia is in the system to either delay, forestall, prevent, what have you, any possible future cooling down. Personally, I would like to see more research done into, more modeling research done into that question. Unfortunately, I don't have a supercomputer in my back pocket. <laughs> so. So I certainly don't have the, uh, the means to do such modeling. I don't have the equipment. Well, so that'd be an interesting question. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos discussing all these ongoings. The general take home is that things will get hotter, wet areas get wetter, dry areas get drier, and rivers overrun their banks kind of sum it up. Hope you, hope you found this video, video interesting. Please share. Please subscribe. Thank you for your time.